Welcome to Paranormal Heart, a place where people can talk about their paranormal experiences. With your host, Cat Ward. Welcome back, folks, to Paranormal Heart Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great episode for you again tonight. I am joined by longtime friends of the show, hosts of Paratruth Radio, Justin and Eric. Justin, Eric, and I fall down the paranormal rabbit hole and discuss the Mandela Effect, the Evil Eye, and other protection amulets, gargoyles, and so much more. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or have questions, comments, or just want to say hello, drop me an email at paranormalheart13 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the show. You can find me on YouTube, Podbean, FringeRadioNetwork.com, KPNL Digital Network on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, and any place you find fine podcasts. You can also join me on Discord, where we can chat while listening to new episodes as they're released on the second and last Sunday of each month at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, on with the show. Hello, Justin and Eric. Welcome back to Paranormal Heart. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for bringing us back on. Um, it's been a while. Um, I don't know. When was the last time I had I want to say a couple of years. I think I was still in Alberta, so it has been a while. So the topic tonight, or today, or whatever time you're listening, um, is protection, um, charms like the evil eye and whatnot. Uh, Justin had a really good good topic, so um, I'll leave it. No, that was Eric. Eric was it know. Eric? No, it was you. Know what? you. It's, uh, was it? It's, it's fine. Every Justin and I had this conversation the other day. Was it really I'm just you, forgetful. Eric? Yes, it was me. I am so okay. sorry. I'm forgetful. It's normal. I'm used to it. It's fine. And I, I thought it was Justin. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Before we got into this, actually, I, I wanted to ask you guys something because there's a new there's a new Mandela effect out there. I want you guys to answer honestly. Who is it that used to do the publisher's clearinghouse checks? Who would give them away? Oh, that was uh, the guy from uh, uh, The Tonight Show. He was the sidekick. Uh, Ed McMahon. Eric, do you concur? Uh, I, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you one way or another, so... <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel, Kat, if I told you you were wrong? No, it was Ed McMahon. Are you kidding me? Who are they saying it is? Okay. This, well, I'm not sure who it was, but I saw a TikTok video on this, and then I saw an article come up in, in one of uh, the Facebook groups that I'm in. And I'm going to read you this article. This is from NewMandelaEffects.com. Uh, so the Mandela Effect is, was Ed McMahon ever the spokesman for Publishers Clearinghouse? The answer is surprisingly no. This effect has shocked many people who would absolutely swear that he was. This is an interesting new Mandela effect, firstly because so many people remember this as truth, and secondly because there is still a substantial amount of public residual evidence to back it up. This does not only apply to amount to the amount of people who swear that one day Ed was going to show up on their doorstep with a huge check, and this was also in a Golden Girls clip, season two, episode two, where uh, Rose claims Ed McMahon is coming from Publishers Clearinghouse. But then there is an actual Ed McMahon autobiography clip that states the same thing, seeing as the program was literally about the life of Ed McMahon, that would be a pretty big error for producers to make. CNN also made reference to his being a spokesperson for publishers when he passed away. This is a network you would hope did a little background research, which no offense to the guy that wrote this article, but CNN is under such scrutiny over the 
past several years as of late, I would contradict what he says there. One of the bigger pieces of residual proof, however, is this clip in 1991 where Johnny Carson appeared on Dave Letterman holding a huge check, and sure enough, it does say Publishers Clearinghouse on it. Though obviously a joke, you would assume Johnny was aware who Ed actually worked for. Where the confusion might lie, the truth is that Ed McMahon was a spokesman for a company called American Family Publishers, a much smaller company that went out of business fairly quickly. So I guess we can possibly say how a very famous personality could be confused with hawking a very famous sweepstakes company. However, this is still an effect that people will actually swear by. So far, 100% of the people I personally polled swear that this is was the truth. I personally haven't found a single doubter yet, but maybe the poll below will show differently. That is wild because, yeah, I just brought it up to, I just Googled it and it says Ed McMahon was never a spokesperson for Publishers Clearinghouse. But I remember, for, and you said uh, what he, he, he was actually with American what? American uh, something. American public. Family. Yeah, something like that. But that was for a short time. And I remember him doing it for years, literally years. That's wild. Yeah. The, the the Mandela effect never ceases to amaze amaze me. It really doesn't. <laughs> I mean, it gets to the I'm I'm a very forgetful person. My it drives my family crazy. <laughs> so now, um, like for example, my husband and I'll be driving. I'm like, oh, when did that building get put up there? And he looks at me like, you're kidding, right? I'm like, no, really, I've never noticed it before. So now I just look at him and I go, Mandela effect. <laughs> it's like, it's always been there. You know, it just popped up. It wasn't there before. He goes, yeah, it's been there for years. I'm like, no, it hasn't. It's got to be Mandela effect. <laughs> and he just looks at me like, you're ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I think so it's. Yeah, less right. less Mandela effect and just more being oblivious to our <laughs> surroundings. Because I've done that. It's I'm just saying I I did that uh, this past week too though because I was driving down the same road that I drive down nearly every single day, and this past week I was driving down that road and I looked to my left and there's this like building there. I think it was like a like a house like a like a little little farm steed. Nothing crazy, but it it was there. It was like and it was I've never seen it before. I'm like. Where the hell did that come from? Like, I have been on this road so many times. I've never seen that thing. And then I re like, I just, the only thing I could think of is, wow, I'm just so damn oblivious to, which is probably a good thing. I shouldn't be looking out the size of my windows at everything. I should be focusing on what's in front of me, but you know. Especially if you're the driver. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Passenger has a little bit more leeway, but yeah. No, no. The passenger just focuses on the front of the road so you, the driver could look around and enjoy their, oh. their drive. Okay. Is that how it works in the States? Yeah. Well, that's how backseat <laughs> drivers work in the States. So, I mean. <laughs> I've mentioned before on the show, um, when we first moved back to the Ottawa Valley almost four years ago, we were driving by one of our local coffee shops, Tim Hortons, and my daughter goes, oh, that tree wasn't there before, and it's this big ass tree, right? This huge, it, and you can tell it's old. I'm like, honey, that's been there for years. Like that was here last time we moved here, we lived here. She said, no, it wasn't. Maybe they transplanted it. I'm like, they don't transplant trees that big. <laughs> like it's always been there. She said, no, and she still insists. And then she looks at me and she's starting to pull the same card, Mandela effect, mom. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I think you're just crazy, but whatever. If you, whatever helps you sleep. So that so that's what your husband says to you when you guys are driving down the road and you yeah. see the building that's not Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not Mandela effect, you're just crazy. <laughs> yep, you've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever had anything like that where you know you swore something was there before or or whatever? Do you have you had an a Mandela effect? Mm, personally, I don't think so. I mean I I I vaguely remember like a couple things that happened throughout the years. I'm just like, I could have swore this was here or that this happened or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, there's nothing that I would say like, no, I know for a fact that this was something and now it's, I don't know, something else, right? Or Yeah. Well, nothing personal, but I'm one of the people that remember it was 
the uh the Berenstein Bears. Berenstein. Yeah. 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 Uh, or yeah, the Berenstein Bears. Um, uh, Mandela died when he was in prison. Um, what's what's another one? Some of the the weird ones, like uh, the uh, Mr. Peanuts guy. I don't know. No, not Mr. Peanuts, but just random ones that I'm like, yeah, I guess it could be one or the other. But something that's not historically devastating. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this Ed McMahon one, when it came up, I'm like, no, that all of the commercials were always publishers clearing house. Yes. And he was holding a check. And he would go to people's houses. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. They've not been able to find any of those commercials on YouTube, huh? Have you checked? Well, this guy that wrote this article had posted different videos, one of which was the Golden Girls episode, which I had saw. That's what the person on TikTok used, was Rose saying, what? Publisher's Clearing House? I won. What? Ed's coming to my house. Interesting. I mean, is it possible, though, then? I mean, that's that's an older show. So is it possible that they said that on that show? And it just so happened to, like, people were, love that show so much. They just, like, kind of connected dots themselves and thought, oh, Ed McMahon does <laughs> Publishers Clearing House. And it just kind of, you know. Anything is possible, Eric. I've said that a hundred times but i at some, at some point it becomes redundant justin <laughs> well <laughs> now i'm starting to question my my sanity <laughs> like mandela effect, that's, that's what this mandela effect thing makes me do i question my sanity so, at, so i've it... questioned sanity <laughs> multiple times throughout the years that i've known you so thank you brother <laughs> <laughs> but no it's no it's now i'm i'm questioning myself really it's like was it egg mcmahon egg mcmahon ed egg. mcmahon yeah his name was yeah. actually no. egg and not ed <laughs> we can start another mandela effect <laughs> <laughs> it was actually meg uh egg mcmuffin <laughs> <laughs> now it's meg mcmahon <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just let's just, like let's just move on to the next topic. Huh? <laughs> I'm starting to think people are just messing with everyone's brains and they're just kind of going on the internet, erasing everything and changing it. Because I would have bet money, first of all, about Nelson Mandela dying in jail. I, I you know, because when I first heard that he was well, back, I was like, wait a minute, he died in jail, didn't he? And then now this publisher's clearinghouse. Yeah, uh, maybe people are just messing with us. Clever hackers. Eric, here's one for you. I saw this picture today, and I I don't I don't know how true it is because it just blew my mind. You know, you remember Bret Hart, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. The wrestler. So, Eric, do you remember Bret Hart dying? <laughs> not like that offhand. Like it sounds familiar. I don't remember exactly like when it would have been several years ago. I think I remember hearing something. <laughs> Who, Brett or his brother? Because Brett's still alive. Brett. No, Owen Brett. died when we were like yeah. kids. Right. Right. But I remember, and it, I, I'm going to admit, it could be me getting confused, but I remember him dying from a stroke. Now, yeah. I do know that he had had a stroke prior to the, to him dying from the stroke, but I remember him dying from the stroke. Hmm. I don't know that I recall it offhand, but is it possible that you heard Bret Hart had a stroke and then somehow accidentally tied it with Owen Hart's death in the past and just thought, oh, Bret Hart? No, because I remember seeing him after he had the first stroke. Okay. Because he was... Um, I'm not sure if he was on a WWE episode or if he it was 
uh, like an interview with him or something. I think I think it was an interview because he was talking about how uh, Vince McMahon. I was going to say Ed McMahon. <laughs> Vince McMahon was such an idiot and, and just a, a douchebag. Um, but then I remember after that he had another one and he died. Hmm. Again, like I said, it's possible, and, and that that's a good. Uh, uh, what you had said, Eric, about me associating Owen Hart and then Brett having a stroke and then him dying. But I vividly remember him passing away. Hmm. And he says, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I wasn't. I'm just saying, my crazy <laughs> recognizes your crazy. Oh, and... oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> That's why we get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my husband and I were watching this thing on uh, Netflix. No, not Netflix. The Roku, I think it was. Anyways, uh, it was called The Dark Side of the Ring, and I. Now that you mention about Bret Hart, when he came on, I'm like, didn't he die? <laughs> now this. Uh, rest, uh, the Dark Side of the Ring is a lot older. Um, it's it's not a recent thing, but I thought that he, yeah. Now that you think of it, now now that you think of it, now that I think of it, I think I remember him passing away as well. Or did you just implant that in my mind, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> it's just. I saw the, the Ed McMahon thing, and before that, I saw the picture of of Bret Hart, and I'm like, wait a minute, didn't he die? So, I was I was talking to my wife, Shelly, about the Ed McMahon thing, and she's like, maybe Ed McMahon was just part of this other one that was, like, this huge scam. And, and I'm like, yeah, and it could also be that people are altering history. But when you say something like that, you're crazy. So you are. Well, but we but we still love you. Yeah. <laughs> we accept you're crazy. Which is <laughs> hilarious because Eric just brought up doing a an episode on time travel. So oh. now who's crazy? <laughs> 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 time travel. I think I discussed this with you guys before or I can't remember if it was on an episode or if it was just because we chat we used to chat so often on Messenger. Um, I remember back in the 80s, I used to subscribe to this magazine. It was called like Science 80, Science 81, Science 82. It would change every year, right? So mm -hmm. and I rem in the beginning, before the actual main article started, they had like two pages that had like little paragraphs of interesting stories that they found and there was this one story and I'm still trying to find uh, any evidence about that particular story they had found in South America in a cave two humans um, and you could tell they were they had been living there but when they did the carbon dating these humans and they were not humanoid they were humans the carbon dating um, came out that they lived during the dinosaurs and we know there were no humans during the dinosaurs and then they said, we'll have more about this in uh, further is issues. Well, each issue, I kept looking and looking and looking. And I would read that magazine from cover to cover. They never talked about it again. And it, it's been just irritating me. Like, I was a teenager. That was like 40-some years ago. And it still bothers me. Like, were they time travelers? Well, I mean, there's been a lot of suggested evidence uh, over the last several years that, that stated that there's likely some sort of humans living during at least portion of the dinosaur um, reign. Mm -hmm. uh, now, mind you, the dinosaur reign was millions of years long, yeah. in various periods. Uh, but there have been um, fossils that have shown yeah, like so human footprints on top of dinosaur footprints, um, showing that apparently, and they're fossilized, so they had to walk the same path at around the same time in order for both to be fossilized. Uh, there's been skeletal remains that have dated back that far. Uh, you know, there's there's plants that are like fossilized plants that show some sort of human um, interaction with them, which is 
you know, I don't know. I mean, it's there, there's there's new evidence coming along saying that there were some sort of human, mm -hmm. at least like creatures or people back then. Um, who exactly they were, what they did. I mean, that, those are all still very, very much like in the dark still. But who knows? I mean, it's possible that there were people there. Maybe. But I, I remember the article saying that there are humans like we are today. So. Yeah. I, I, it just really fascinated me, and, and I still periodically search the internet for, for that article or follow-up or anything about something like that. What is really interesting is Eric has brought this up, that the creatures that are mentioned in the Bible could have possibly been um, dinosaurs that were living with humans. Um which is fascinating in and of itself. But how many times have we heard, and this is just, you know, there were no humans in the times of dinosaurs, but maybe it's not time travel. It's just we're not being given the whole history or we're not discovering the history as much as we think we are. Yeah. And the carbon well, dating could not be as accurate as the, as they think. Which still isn't very accurate. Right. I mean, carbon dating really only shows the half-life of something. So then they have to, or what is assumed to be the half-life. So then they have to do the math to figure right. out just how old that is. And it isn't always accurate. But, mind you, we technically still live with dinosaurs today. Like, look at crocodiles and alligators. Yeah. I mean, we call them reptiles, and that's you know, all they are. Um, you know, you're but, wrong. Oh, God. Dinosaurs <laughs> are chickens. Dinosaurs are, well, they're chickens, too. You know what? That's why they all fled the earth and died. They were chickens. They didn't want to go further. They didn't want, they didn't want to have to come into this era. They're like, oh, God, 2022. It's going to be horrible. I don't want to live to that long. <laughs> Asteroid, take us out. <laughs> AD on top of that. AD, yes. 20, <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, you know, all the birds and all that stuff, technically, yeah. Uh, but when we talk about living ant, like true living ancestors that are still very much similar to creatures that lived during the, the Jurassic and the Jurassic and, you know, the Croatius and all that. Um, alligators, crocodiles, sharks, various types of whales, you know, they're all very much just exact descendants of the dinosaurs. Some of them have grown a little smaller. And, you know, what's interesting is like, we think that, oh, we, the reason these quote unquote modern dinosaurs are smaller is just because of evolution and whatever happened, uh, you know, with, with the fallout and everything after the asteroid, it killed all the larger creatures because they lost food and whatever. There was, um, I think it was in Evolution 2.0, Justin. Uh, you and I had the guy on a long time ago, the author of Evolution 2.0, years ago. The guy on. The guy. Well, I don't remember his name, but, you know. And he talks about me being unprofessional. <laughs> this is... Okay, I, you know. the, the so, guy that wrote Evolution 2.0, that guy. You know what? Everybody, just just look up Evolution 2.0. You'll figure out who the guy is. Because he's the guy, okay? That's a compliment. Oh, so you don't have the to use his guy. name. He's just the he's, guy. He's not a guy who wrote it. I said the guy who wrote it. There's a difference. <laughs> I'm going to be patient for a moment because Justin's about to look it up and tell us exactly. Well, I, I remember his name. I just wanted to make sure I was correct. It's mm. Harry Marshall. Harry Marshall. Harry or Terry? Perry with a P. Perry. Perry. Like Perry the platypus. Okay. Got it. You know what's <laughs> really bad is when I asked you, was it Terry or Harry? I turned my ear towards my microphone to listen to what you're about to say, but I have headphones on. That makes no <laughs> sense at all. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> um, and now Eric is showing his age <laughs> what he's 35 years old and he's got a hearing problem 36 already. i'm 36 okay oh you're 36. still a kid uh, yeah, no. it's anyway. like when you have to turn the radio down in the car so you can see this see um i do uh, an ad <laughs> yes I, every time i'm delivering or, or something i have to turn the radio down so i don't confuse myself with the numbers i'm trying to find um <laughs> anyway so perry in his book evolution 2.0 uh, they talk, he talks about 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, the way oxygen was much more pure yep. and strong in the early days uh, of creation and when the dinosaurs lived. So everything was just bigger because the oxygen was much more pure uh, than what we have today. Yep. And as that oxygen slowly disintegrated in terms of its purity, everything kind of became smaller and I'm smaller. Higher concentrations. Which, yeah. Right. Which could be a result <laughs> of the asteroid as well, or flooding or whatever other natural disasters that they claim happened. And now, man. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I have I have heard that of uh, about the oxygen thing. Could we have a Jurassic Park now, like the movies state? Because could they survive in this oh. very low oxygen? Good point. It depends. I mean, elephants are pretty dang big, you know? I mean, well, there's sure plenty of right. dinosaurs that are way bigger than they were, but or are, but whale, well, I don't know if that counts. I mean, whales are huge, and... I was yeah. thinking of whales, too, but it's like, would sure. that count, too? Because back whales, yeah. I mean, they hmm. just take in a deep breath of air. They've got enough oxygen on Earth for it to live. Right, but I don't know. I, I I get what you're saying too, though, Justin. Like I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, because I mean, clearly, I don't think it was the lack of pure oxygen that killed off the dinosaurs. It just happened to be a result um, of, I guess, I don't know if you want to call it evolution or de-evolution in this case, since everything was kind of getting smaller and the, That's very the you know. Yeah, I I remember reading an article a couple of years ago saying that uh, um, that very thing, Eric, about uh, the lack of oxygen is not what killed the dinosaurs. It was the the meteor, but that's why we're everything on Earth is so much smaller is because you know we don't it's we don't have the same oxygen as we did way back then. Mm -hmm. And I love how we announced that we were going to talk about protection. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking because that too. We can, we can talk about protection. What could we have done to protect the dinosaurs? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Go back in time and change time to create a Mandela effect. And that will be on a future episode of Parachute Radio. <laughs> we will discuss that. <laughs> yeah. My apologies to you listeners for saying it's one topic and we actually jumped into another one, but, but that's just how Eric and Justin this, are. It is. That's, you never know where they're going to go. Our rabbit hole episodes now. Yes. So there's a, there's days where we just have a lot of stuff to talk about. We're like, you know what? Rabbit hole. <laughs> and your Let's mascot go. is a rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. Count Jasper the pair of hair. Pair of hair. I love that. So, oh, sorry, he's not a rabbit. He's a hair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a made of tomato. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for the most part. I just had to talk about it because I'm like, no, there's no way Ed McMahon, there's no way Ed McMahon wasn't the one doing it. Yeah, I know. But and it, like I mentioned earlier, I remember him doing that for years. Going to people's houses, giving them the great big check. And I, I'm, I'm just blown away by that. Now my head hurts. Thanks, I, Justin. I, more than it's more than the big check. I remember him literally saying, "Publishers clearing house." It has nothing to do with the check. It has his, his voice to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to put that out on social media and ask, yeah, ask family and friends uh, who do you remember was a spokesperson for that and see what they say. But even Shelley was like, I, I didn't even say, hey, "Do you remember Ed McMahon?" handing these out. I'm, I said, who was it that used to, to give out the publisher clearing house checks? Oh, it was Ed McMahon. Yeah. Oh, not according to this article. Well, that article's wrong. <laughs> 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 They're messing with us. It, it is very possible, and this is the sad part, too, is the Mandela effect could also be just false memory. Yeah. Um, like Eric was talking about. You, you associate it with something else and then it creates a false memory. Totally could be a possibility because it happens a lot. Like Melson and Melson Mandela. Oh, good grief. Nelson Mandela. 
Oh, you're uh, to changing the names now, <laughs> right? Well, maybe but that's yeah. what their names are supposed to be, and it's been changed. No, yeah. um, maybe for Nelson Mandela, we remember him being in jail and just assumed he died. Could be. I don't know, but I swear, like I would, I'm not, I'm not a betting person, and I would actually bet money. But there's no way to prove it now because everyone, you know, obviously he just died. How many years ago now? I forget the actual date, but it, yeah, it's recent. Not not as far back as we think. No, exactly. Things to ponder. But protection. <laughs> evil, evil eye in the eye of Horus and yes. gargoyle. Yes. <laughs> Forty minutes later. <laughs> Actually, it's only been about twenty nine. <laughs> I that was a joke. Okay. Yeah, I know. You were close though. <laughs> no, I've got forty five. Yeah, another Mandela effect going, Kat. <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh yeah, this stopped uh, recording for a bit, so uh, yeah. <laughs> to my listeners, yes, uh having tech issues again for whatever we see, we started talking about Mandela effect. I mentioned that someone's messing with us and then it just stopped recording. What do oh. you make of that? Did you bring your crystals into your studio? No, I did not. See, you're giving out weird. That's the that's why we're talking about protection tonight because you're giving off those energies yeah. that are negative and speaking things into existence. Since I've had my studio here, I haven't brought my crystals in. Oh, jeepers. There you go. Yeah. Well, so here's here's a mind blower for you, cat. Uh-oh. Eric has most recently gotten a tarot deck. And has actually started doing tarot reading. What? I for know, myself. right? For myself. for myself and my girlfriend. But yeah. Wow. That's. I'm that's shocked. A new thing. I, I'm. 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 Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> what? What kind of deck? And he read through an entire book about psychic skills for magic and witchcraft. Wow. I'm. I'm turning over leaves. You know, yeah, not just a, a not Let's... just a, a new leaf. It's just leaves. I like that. Leaves, I'm turning over yeah, new, not leaves. A new leaves. Just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> go big or go home, eh, Eric. <laughs> yeah. What Eric doesn't realize is he's earned a lot of respect from me for. I mean, he didn't before. Different. I know ain't that, that's some bull, isn't no. it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Co-host and cousin, yeah, and he yeah, didn't respect you before. <laughs> but looking at things differently, and mm. and questioning a lot of things yeah i see what he's saying but in reality when we get off air he's like oh, so glad to be done talking to that asshole <laughs> referring <laughs> to me or you <laughs> <laughs> you're the you and uh shelly are the only two that i ever really talked to <laughs> that's saying a lot uh the deck that I got, it's called the uh, Terror Tarot, and it's just the uh, 22 Major Arcane. Ar Arcana? Is that what it is? Arcana? Um, major Arcana, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's only the first 22 because that's all that's come out for that deck so far. Um, the company I bought it from are still working on the miners. So once looks them, I'll, I'll get into that, which is fine because like, I feel like if I jumped right into, was it, 72 cards, I'd be like... I can't remember all this. I don't know what all of this means. <laughs> Start small. I still don't know what all of them mean. And I know even less than that because I don't even know how many is in a deck. <laughs> <laughs> but let us know when you start recording. <laughs> <laughs> I have been, thank you. <laughs> So, do we want to go on to protection? Sure, <laughs> do we let's want go. to see where this keeps right. going? <laughs> let's start with the, um, what was it? Uh, it was the evil eye, mm -hmm. but with a blue yeah, eye. Yeah. The protection against the evil eye, yes. yeah. Um, which is, it. I, I've kind of already had known this before, but I was at, at a convention here in Bismarck. Um, all I can remember is the the uh, abbreviation SOS, but I can't remember what it's spiritual something something holistic. Um, I can't remember the full name, 
But I was there today and I bought Shelly a an evil eye bracelet. And it's uh, volcanic rock for black rock and then um, painted glass for the the evil eye protection, which is like Eric had mentioned in, in the messenger, the blue eye. Uh, um, out the glasses was blue, mm-hmm. um, which I had never actually realized that blue meant protection against the evil eye. I just knew that that symbol was the protection against the evil eye. I have blue eyes. Does that mean I, I I'm automatically protected? <laughs> That's for evil. It's because I'm evil. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm looking at you, Justin. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think one thing we need to do is just kind of give an idea of what exactly an evil eye is. To begin yes. Because you can't protect yourself from something you don't know exists, right? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the That's evil eye gives you when you're in trouble. That's the evil eye. Okay. So, the evil eye. (laughs) 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 Um, I mean, you know, we we, we all talk about the evil eye, and we think about the evil eye as being this actual physical um, thing that produces negative energy. And really, the evil eye uh, is any sort of negative energy that comes from another individual. And that could be a negative look, whether it's purposeful or by accident. Uh, It could be a... For example, there are some cultures where when a baby is born and someone comments on the baby positively, uh, the parents may quickly ask them to take it back and spit on the baby's face as a way to prevent, yeah, I know it sounds weird, wow. to prevent the um, the contradiction of that positive comment. So, you know, there's a belief where, oh, if a, someone comments on a baby in a positive way, that may come off as a negative thing later in life somehow. So you got to hurry up and erase that. Um, and so really the evil eye is just any sort of negative, um, energy that is pushed towards a person or an object. So if you have negative energy towards a tree and you kind of direct that energy that way, it may wither and die or stop producing fruit. Uh, if you do it towards somebody's job, that job may become unfruitful as well and they may lose it or you can make someone sick, um, uh, with various diseases or whatever, give them mental, um, you know, headaches and and various mental disorders and stuff like that, just by giving them a look and present, um, I guess, pushing your energy on them. Um, and so really the negative or the evil eye comes from all kinds of sources. And it's not always from people that you know. It could just be a random person you're walking past on the street um, who may give you an odd look. You, like you ever see... I'm sure this has happened to everybody. Uh, you walk past somebody and they just kind of give you this look up and down as if they're like <laughs> measuring you some way. They look, you know, they look at your eyes, they down at your feet and back at you. Like, what the, what are you looking Not at? Not me, never. At, right? No, never? Okay. <laughs> no, of well, course. Yes, it has. You know, and I so. Love you guys <clears throat> laughed at me for simplifying it and Eric went into this whole explanation and it is exactly what i just said no it's not eric i just called you eric no it's not justin no it's not it's different no (laughs) see i picked on eric for many years because we didn't think he really existed so now i have to turn the tables and pick on you (laughs) i still pick on eric yeah that's true and he still picks on me so well, your family and co-host, you're supposed to. <laughs> I, I really find it fascinating how it's called the evil eye. And it's so many people think that's a bad thing, but it actually means it's protecting you from the evil eye. But everybody calls it the evil eye. In terms of the amulet? Yeah. The blue stone? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah it's weird. Right. It's yeah. very weird uh, that they would do that. Um and there's really no explanation as to why it's called the evil eye offhand. Uh, you would think it would be called something like the anti-evil eye or something cool <laughs> like that. <laughs> no. Have you guys ever seen Sleepy Hollow? Like Yes, Dunn, yes. yes. That's what I was thinking of. Um, yeah, in, in that movie, under his bed is the evil eye. And the kid is like, you've marked by the evil eye. Somebody wishes you harm. Yeah. 
And then he looks at the book that um, uh, Christina Ricci's character gives to him, and it says, no, it's protection against the evil eye. Yeah. So we, we live in a world where pop culture even recognizes that, but way back when, if you were marked by that image, it was a bad omen. Going back to what you said, Eric, about uh, that, I don't know what culture does this when uh, saying good things about the baby yeah. and the parents will say, you know, take it back. I wonder mm -hmm. if that has something to do with um, saying something positive about the baby brings the attention of the negative entities and energy. And that's why they're like, no, 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 we don't want them to know yeah. that this baby. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it at all. Um, you know, it's like one of those things where um, opposites attract. So wherever you're going to cast positive energy and negative energy is sure to find it and want to, you know, take its place in its position, mm -hmm. uh, so to say. So, yeah, I mean, that's very, po I think actually, I mean, now that you mentioned, I think in the article that I had sent you guys earlier, that's exactly what it says in that particular portion of the article regarding why they want them to take back the, the, the positive comments. I got to be honest, because I didn't read it yet. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, it, you know, it'll be, <laughs> it'll it's be still useful to you after the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah after well, the fact. What's interesting is, in today's culture, we think of people spitting in your face, and this is even going to other cultures, people spitting in your face as a disrespect or a bad thing, but spitting in the face of a baby is supposed to correct something. I'm not saying they're wrong or yeah. that we should think of them as anything different, but it is interesting. It is interesting, and those are other cultures. I mean, in the U.S., you spit in anybody's face, you're getting slapped. <laughs> You're getting Will Smith all over I this place. Just gonna say, oh, it's cheapers. That's everywhere is now. <laughs> I I wasn't gonna go there, but now I guess apparently we're going there on this. <laughs> Did it? Did it so. He had to. He had to bring it up. Maybe I'm gonna start picking on Eric again, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> the um the spitting on the baby. I wonder if it's because. Um, to me, this makes sense. You know, when you spit in somebody else's face, uh, it's a negative thing. Well, spitting on the baby's face, maybe that is trying to put a little negativity so the negative can't see the goodness. You know, you know what I mean? Could be. Yeah, it's could very be. possible. Uh, side note, crazy deja vu just now with Kat talking about the spitting on faces. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, no way. The, yeah. Um, but I feel like at least that portion of the conversation, like I'm, I'm drawing it back to like when I lived with my parents years ago and I was in the basement doing an episode. Um, and I think it was like, in my mind, it was the three of us and you were made that exact comment. And I don't know why, I don't know if it's just deja, you know, just deja vu, <sighs> just a random thing, but it's like, you it's know, the tarot this, readings that you're doing now. It could, it could be. <laughs> it's, well, it, it's in the Matrix. He's seeing through the Matrix finally. Yep, there's yep. got to be more. Like, I can't... You know, there's the there's a scientific explanation behind Deja Vu, which we've all, yep. I'm sure, discussed on the shows, um, in which the mind doesn't fully process what is being said, and so you hear it, but then by the time the mind catches up, it's like it's already been said, and you think, oh that's a memory that I had at some point when it wasn't, it just all happened in real time, just in two different pathways. Um, which is false ridiculous memory. to me. What? False memories again. Yeah. False memories again. Um, which doesn't make sense to me because, you know, and I've said this before on our show is I've had deja vu and I've been able to predict things that would happen next because of the deja vu. Yeah. Um, which tells me, I mean, it could be, I don't know. I mean, it, I'm starting to think, like, could this be, like, a connection that any of us have with ourselves in a parallel timeline where we've had this conversation before on another timeline and somehow we've intersected it at this moment. And I remember, oh, I'm thinking it's me, but in reality, it's another version of me that's further ahead or behind the time that we are right now could also be people that are psychic or sensitive don't realize it see into the 
very immediate future and don't realize what's going on. That's very possible. I just did a cleansing this this past week for last last weekend. But you're going through but, a growth. Yes. So your energy kinds of stuff. A growth spurt? <laughs> I know. I'm like, God, finally, I'm going to be six feet. That's what the doctor told me when I was a kid, but no. I just hit puberty at 36 years old. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> like I said, there's a, there's, there's a de-evolution a in human field. history. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am devolving. <laughs> that reminds me of a Star Trek Next Generation episode. <laughs> okay. So I have Boris. Hello, is this mic on? <laughs> What's interesting is, you know, you have the evil eye, which kind of connects to European culture. Um, but then you go into the eye of Horus. Um, and there, there's so many things that go with the eye of Horus, but the eye of Horus is also protection. It also uh, is a part of wisdom really? and knowledge and, and stuff like that as well. So, And it's also for... It's, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just, Eye of Horus is also healing. Protection, health, and restoration. But then you have the Eye of Ra. Yep. And literally, I've, I've looked at this a hundred times. Literally, the Eye of Horus and the Eye of Ra is just the eye flipped, mirrored the opposite direction so that you get the two eyes. Yeah. On each it's side. almost as if the Eye of Ra and the Eye of Horus are, are the same entity. But almost split personalities. Well, the IRA is supposed to be the feminine Charles counterpart. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, but there are people that use Horus and Ra synonymously yeah. as well. You know who my favorite eye is? The eye of the tiger. <laughs> now I think of, of of Dean Winchester. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've seen it. Come okay. On. If <laughs> not, I was going to end the interview now and never talk to you again. No. I mean, that's like one of the best parts of Yellow Fever, minus the fact I know, that right? screaming like a little girl when a I cat know. pops out of the. That was scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did a deep voice. It was. That was scary. Oh, that's right. Yes. He has more of a girly voice than I do. <laughs> But it is interesting that the eye is a represent representation of, of power in multiple cultures. Yes. Um, whether that be knowledge, healing, protection. Um, a lot of people say the eye is is the window to the soul. I was just um, thinking that. Yep. Say that. Um, but that's something that that has fascinated me for a long time. Not not just the eye to the soul or the window to the soul thing, but so many cultures have incorporated the eye. Uh, but look at you know the back of the American dollar bill, mm. and they you have the pyramid with the eye in it, and people say it's the all-seeing eye, um, which is actually the protection of from the evil eye. Um, some people associate it with the Eye of Horus or the Eye of Ra. Some people associate it with the Illuminati. Just all depends on what people are um, are in the mindset. Or it could even be the uh, Eye of Sauron. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> yes, I'm a nerd. For those of you, J.K. Ra or J.K. Uh, <laughs> 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 J.R.R. J.K. J.R.R. You know. Egg, egg man. Hey, yeah, we're just... Mark in my we're, head. I'm like, no, that's not right. We're George butchering R. R. everybody's names tonight. <laughs> oh. Yes, Lord but, of the uh, Rings. But even that, though, going into, into fiction and he, even though he called it the Eye of Surin, um, it is it is literally the exact same thing. It is literally the exact same thing. The Eye of Horus, the Eye of Ra, the Evil Eye, the the All Seeing Eye, um, but it goes into pop culture. Big Brother's watching you. It's just Could somebody's be. watching. 
Big it's, Brother's it's, watching you, or yeah, there's a there's a God that's always watching. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. You know, we're as as humans, we it, it makes you feel like, or at least supposed to kind of make you feel like you're very small compared to yeah the eyes that are watching you. You know, and we never know what those eyes are, uh, but the eye. It just in itself, the eye is, has so much symbolism behind it. Um, like how many times have we heard that the eye is the window to the soul? Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's power in that. Um, I mean, the eye is basically the gateway to, or, or at the least, the, the, yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, like to something that's so oh, yeah, deep yeah. and powerful and misunderstood. You know, the, I mean, it's oh, yeah. you look at something or react to something, or it can create positive energy that same I can create negative energy depending on how you look at something or react to something or it can create positive energy um, or the third eye in, or the third eye in the, so okay. there, there's multiple multiple eye things there's multiple eye things that you can see um, something that you brought up in in the Facebook chat about protection cat and Something that's fascinating, even going back to the cartoon Gargoyles. Mm-hmm. I had always been fascinated with Gargoyles before that cartoon came out. Me too. Um, you know, seeing them on buildings even after that. And then what you had talked about in the, the private chat about um, them actually... It, it's not about them being scary or evil. They were there for protection believe that these things would come alive at night to attack you and it also had to do with the way that things were carved so that it looked like these things were moving in the middle of the night um and there are people that believe to this day that gargoyles are are protection some people believe that they do come alive um, but the the cartoon to me was like amazing. I I thought that was the most the best story plot I had ever seen, where they come alive and then in certain scenes they're battling or something, and all of them turn to stone and they're like, no. When the sun comes um, up, yeah. yeah, they get that little sliver of dawn. Like, you know, and it's it's weird, yeah. like because like it, it's right now I'm getting so many like, um. Flashbacks? Like, flashbacks, yeah, flashbacks and vibes. Because my studio is in the room that I, my bedroom that I grew up in, and I live in my house that I grew up in, and so the my studio is in my bedroom, and I used to have my bed right where my computer is. My TV was on this back wall where my bookshelf is, and every single night, I would watch Gargoyles as I fell asleep. Oh wow! And so like we're talking about this, and it's like, oh man, I remember those are the days. Like just <laughs> kick back late at night, watch gargoyles. Yeah. Maybe Batman the animated series or something, and then just pass out. It's good times. Not to get off topic, but have you ever tried to watch some of the shows you watched as a kid, and then you're like, <laughs> yes, why the hell was I watching this? <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes I'm like, that's why I was watching this. <laughs> that's, that's dope. Are you afraid of the dark? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's I've tried and watching I've tried that and Goosebumps. And, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them was like, oh my god, this is so cheesy. Like I've watched like episodes of Goosebumps. Like, I remember this is so creepy, this is so good. I turn it on, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. A few years ago, I was telling the kids about this um uh, favorite show of mine, and yes, it's going to show my age. It's the uh, Six Million Dollar Men. Okay. Yeah. So I well, went on. Well before our, <laughs> well before our time. <laughs> yes. Respect your elders, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'm going to go on on YouTube because because the whole way that I started talking to the kids about it, we we're talking about Bigfoot for whatever reason, and I and then it kind of stemmed to. Uh, Steve Austin. So I went to YouTube and I'm like, yeah, this is a great show. It was great. I loved it. So we're, we're, I'm showing them a clip and they're just kind of staring at it and I'm staring at the screen and then I look at them. I'm like, yeah, it's not as good as I remembered. <laughs> I was really disappointed. It's just because Hollywood has spoiled us now. Yeah. Special effects. Yeah. I mean, I think there's still 
some sweet things from from those older shows. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's just some things that will never break that nostalgia. You know, yeah. like I know, I know. Growing up, one of my favorite movies of all time uh, was Pumpkinhead, uh, the first one specifically. And I know they're making a new one. I know a new oh, one's really? coming out. I know, yeah, and I know I'm going to love it. But there's still going to be that re- just that memory same. of watching these old movies like Pumpkinhead or Jaws or Alien. Uh, we're kids. And even the new aliens, that have, I mean, the new aliens, that's one thing I can say is the newer versions of aliens mm-hmm. suck. Yeah. Period. They're Period. not as good as the original. Yeah, none of them are. Or even as like two or three. I think Aliens 1, 2, and 3 were the best in the franchise. And then Resurrection and all that crap started happening. Yeah. AVP and that I was bad. Prometheus though. Prometheus, Prometheus was good, but Prometheus was also a very different storyline. You know, that was like a like a pre right, right, right. Kind of like the the what we have now with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they brought the Spider Verse together and brought the three different Spider Men. That technically the first two weren't even a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because they didn't create that until recently. Um, right. But then, same thing was in a completely separate universe than the original movies were. Mm-hmm. Because in the original three movies, she, uh, uh, what was what was her, the character's name? Her? What MJ? was the character's name for three? <laughs> in the Alien movies. Oh, the Alien, the Ripley, okay. Ripley, Ripley, Ripley. Yeah. Ripley. Is Ripley. I thought we were talking about Spider Man. Like, me too. Man? MJ? Uh, Did, uh, we must I, don't know, man. I think we must have nodded <laughs> off, Eric. And Justin just kept on talking. <laughs> in in the in the original alien movies, Ripley had no knowledge of the aliens. Mm-hmm. And but in Prometheus but even going back to like Alien versus Predator, mm-hmm. where humanity should have, have had knowledge of this creature that had stalked them and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seemed like Ripley had no knowledge of that. So it's weird to watch all these different movies um, that are supposed to be in the same universe and they're they're really not in the same universe. Going off yeah. topic again, I read today that Tom Holland will be the new Doctor Who. Yeah, I, I'm really upset about that. Why? Just because I... Think he's way too young. But that's Same, just... yeah. I, I mean, I haven't seen uh, the Uncharted movie yet, but I won't watch it because of that reason as well. He's too young. I don't know if you know what <laughs> Uncharted is. That may that may be too too young for you, Cat. Um, oh. That's a newer game. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, it's a game. It's it's a game. Oh, yeah. I thought it was so a movie. A We're talking game. movies, no. so yeah. Well, that's because it's a game, <laughs> but they just released a movie based on that game, and in the game, the guy's probably between. I think throughout the series, he's between like 25 and 50, I believe, throughout the course of four games. And so they ended up getting Tom Holland to play this character, Nathan Drake. And he's basically like 16 playing a 25 year old, (laughs) which I think is actually like a prelude technically, but it's just weird. It's like, why? Actually, technically, he was a 25 year old playing a 16 year old in the Spider Man. Okay. He just looked. Young. That's what that's what I mean. That why 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 I said basically <laughs> sixty. I mean at least like usually Nathan Drake always had facial hair. That's something that Tom Holland does not. Oh, have. Right. <laughs> All these different characters that are supposed to originally look older, and then they get the actors that look younger. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to ask you before we got off topic: Is this Pumpkinhead a remake or is it a like a, a sequel? I believe it's, I think it's just going to be uh, technically a remake. It's just everything's going to be okay. renewed. They've, they've been working on it for years, and it was originally, um, originally it was supposed to be made by, I think, the guys who did uh, Stranger Things. Oh. They wanted to do it initially, but they lost the the option for it, I guess. So I don't know if they're going to still be involved or not, but yeah. I wanted to... Dark oils. Uh, what what i said gargoyles oh how about them gargoyles <laughs> <laughs> but anyways go ahead. It, what you're it, it, I, I just started thinking about how 
like for gargoyles, for example, how we th used to think that they were something that was evil, but they're actually our protectors. It, for whatever reason, it made me think when I was a lot younger, I was really heavily into martial arts and so was my father and one of my uncles and we all had our, um, our jackets from the club that we belonged to and we had dragons on the back and my uncle was very very uh, Catholic heavy duty Roman French Roman Catholic and he went to church one time with with the uh, with his jacket he got run out of church and he had a dragon because he had oh. a dragon on his back and they said that was the devil that was Satan and they're all like, you need to leave. And he's like, no, this is like Asian culture. These are like strength and that like they're, they're not, the, what? And he tried to um, defend why he was wearing the jacket. And uh, no, they're, they pretty much ran him out of town. Well, like they, he couldn't go back to church with that jacket. That's sad. Yeah. Now, for Even European dragons or originally were, even though, people would battle them they were protecting things mm -hmm. might have not have been their things but they were protecting things yeah <laughs> i like how you well, wrote I, that i think uh you know our belief of gargoyles being or appearing evil when we were younger is more of a misconception just because gargoyles Our, often have the snarling creepy looking faces and right, the claws right. and everything yeah. yeah and i know justin you said like it, it's so it was they were designed for like protection to spook people into believing that these creatures can come to life at night and you can see them moving and stuff. But if I'm not mistaken, there's also a spiritual side to it too, to ward off evil. And that goes right along the same lines of like on a Halloween when we light jack o' lanterns uh, to ward off evil spirits. Which I mean, of course, is weird because I mean, why would an evil spirit be scared of a pumpkin with a light in it or of a Right. Missile, you know, like just a miscellaneous object as a gargoyle. Like it doesn't make sense, but that's where superstition kind of lost its track along the way. And in modern days, it's just beautiful architecture. So we don't believe those things maybe necessarily as they did back when they first started to erect these buildings. Um, go ahead. No, no, uh, I was just gonna say, um, I, I, I've talked to you about this because. Shelly and I went to Sicily, and they, they still to this day in Sicily use the Medusa head as a way of warding off evil mm -hmm. in their home as well. Really? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, and I mean, Medusa was originally, or is technically, uh, known as a protective god. Uh, she's a, a protector of people, uh, which is a, a misconception because of the movies that came out that show her as an evil entity. Uh, you know, battling on Hercules and things like that. Uh, but in reality, yeah, uh, at least spiritually speaking, she was a protector. I didn't know that. You taught me something, Eric. Hey! Yeah, you know, hey! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't really know the full legend of Medusa. Um, you know, a lot of people believe that Medusa was a part of these three sisters that had snakes, hair, and, and snake bodies or, or whatever. She was actually a cursed woman. Yeah. That part I knew. You didn't teach me anything new there, Justin. Well, a lot of people. A lot of people don't. I'm not educating you, Kat. I'm educating your listeners. I have very intellectual, smart listeners, so they probably already knew that. But thank you for sharing. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many young people don't know a lot of these things. So... She doesn't have a lot of young listeners. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, to be fair, Eric and I probably don't either. So. <laughs> uh, how many young people actually listen to podcasts anymore? It's growing. It depends on how young we're talking. Like teens. Oh, yeah. Probably not that many. I know a couple. Teens are all on TikTok. <laughs> or yeah. or drugs. TikTok or drugs. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you said they were on TikTok. I'm saying they're also on drugs. <laughs> Just saying. Either they're on TikTok or they're on hey, drugs. Statistic, folks. These are statistics, okay? I'm telling you, it's those two things. 
I'm going to have to put a disclaimer that I don't necessarily agree with what my guests are saying. (laughs) (laughs) I already have that disclaimer on our show. (laughs) That was something we did years ago. We should probably start putting disclaimers up here just to protect us. (laughs) Even more so since we got on to a new network. (laughs) (laughs) Cheapers. (laughs) And this is the last time we joined you on her show. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> in case you listeners haven't realized it yet, um, Eric, Justin, and I have known each other for quite a few years now. So uh, <laughs> that's why the kibitz. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Cat. Cat. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're going to be like Luigi in Mario, <laughs> Mario Mansion. Mario. Cat. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. Actually, I have mentioned you guys a few times on the show. Um, nothing good. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. When I talk about my hat man encounter uh, that I had when I was a kid, and um, uh, this is when I first met you guys, uh, I was listening to an episode. You guys were talking about hat man, and I messaged Justin to say, hey, you know, new listener. I can't even remember who, who, uh, got me on to listening to you guys. I think it was John Mallard from Odd to Newfoundland. I'm not, it seems so far yeah, sure was John, Yeah. I, I had started talking to John, I think, before I started talking to you. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, and I messaged you to say that um, I had had a hat man encounter, but mine was short. And the guy that you were interviewing, it, you know, it was always a tall hat man that everybody encounters. And you sent me a, a YouTube link Um with this guy actually reenacted his hat. Uh, oh, jeepers, I can't talk now. Sorry. Um, he reenacted the hat man that he saw as a child, which was the short version. And I remember watching it. And as soon as I saw that, I had instant flashbacks and emotions of terror when I saw it. Cause I'm like, this is the hat man that I saw as a child. And it's just, and, and whenever I talk about my hat man encounter, I always bring up your guys' episode that I, I I don't think it was the first episode, but it was one of the first first couple of ones that I had listened to. That's a long time. Like, I remember long that was an time. episode I did in, in my parents' basement. <laughs> that oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, that was a long time ago. You know, it, it's, I mean. Where was in his parents' basement. I mean, most of the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where my computer was. And we did podcasts <laughs> back then, like, for hours. Um, it's, I mean, it's only two people, but it's kind of. I don't know if it's coincidental or just, I mean, I'll have to do some research now that you brought it up, but you said you saw a short version of the hat man when you were a kid. Yep. And then this, um, um, the guest that we had on also saw a short version of the hat man when he was a kid. And so is it possible that the short version only appears to kids and the tall version appears to adults? Um, and if that's the case, why? I mean, is that just... To, to kind of size themselves up to the kid. Maybe it's not perception. as perception. It could be perception. Maybe it's, although you would think if it's perception, then the character or the, the shadow would be a lot taller to the kid. Yeah. Well, um, what I mean, what I mean by perception is the, the entity is trying to give the perception so that it doesn't come off as, as, as scary. It's intimidating. Mm-hmm. Right. All, yeah. Right. But I have heard of okay. uh, people saying that as a child they saw the taller hat man too. So that was the okay. first time I ever heard of the short one, and it it just hmm. intrigued me because I was like somebody else saw the short one. I was super excited. I didn't feel crazy as much. Started working with a guy <laughs> um, in Nebraska that had mentioned the hat man. I don't usually hear much about the hat man much about you know uh, people that I'm talking to. Usually, um, if I tell them that I, I do a paranormal podcast, oh, you know, I, I had a haunting in mm-hmm. in my house, or, you know, I saw this this alien once, or um, most of the answers I get is, oh, you know, tell me about your, your, your stories. And when I hear something like that, I'm like, well, I would love to tell you my stories, but it is quite obvious that you have stories so why don't you tell me your stories um before i had even told this gentleman um that i had a paranormal podcast this was a year ago he had talked about the hat man he had all these different 
theories. We'll just call them conspiracy theories. Um, and, and we just kind of started talking, and he had mentioned dre- waking up and seeing the hat man, and his wife thought he was nuts. But that was the first time in a very long time since we had done that episode, and I talked to you, Kat, about your hat man encounter that I had heard anybody mention the hat man. Um, and maybe that's because I haven't had an encounter with him myself, or... Um, I, yeah, I don't know. It's not mentioned very often. You know, we always hear about shadow people. Yep. And something that was brought up on that episode of the Hat Man was, I think his name was Kyle, um, had brought up that he felt that the Hat Man was actually kind of like a um, higher authority, kind of like a general or something to yep. the, the, hat, the that. shadow yeah. people that we saw. Mm-hmm. I have actually had um, well, Katie Turner. I had asked her because um, she's a an impressively talented psychic medium, um, and I asked her one time, "What are your feelings about this four foot hat man that I used to see as a child?" Because the hat men usually um, people have they're they're terrified and they they say he's he's just. They feel evil from him, but I, although I was a child and I was terrified of this one, I didn't really have any, he never took notice of me. And Katie said he was protecting you from whatever was in that apartment building that I lived in at the time. And I'm like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense now. So I, I don't know if other people feel that the shorter version um, is, is a protector and the taller version is not i i don't know if if there's a difference if they're the same i mean sorry could it be that it's like um it's like because so many people think of the hatman being evil and if there was something else more evil there the lesser evil could have been trying to protect you for itself for its own selfish gains as opposed to letting another evil take over um it's like the enemy is my friend but it's still my enemy or this is my meal. <laughs> no, right. I'll, I will fight you for it. <laughs> as we were just talking about other things being perceived as evil, but we don't know anything about the Hat Man, even though he appears and he looks, for a lack of the better word, demonic. Maybe he's not. Yeah, like or gargoyles. Maybe any of these entities, the shadow shadow people, uh, Hat Man, are there not to be? Um, what's the word? Um, we'll just go with scary to humans. They're trying to scare off something else that is is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Eric and I have talked about this on our show. Um, the perception of angels today are humans with wings. Mm-hmm. And the descriptions that are in the Bible are these horrific, scary things that would scare the daylights out of anybody. Yep. But they appear to people as these humans with wings because it is the less scary way to be perceived. Now, you guys know more about the Bible than I do, but if I'm not mistaken, and I might be, do they actually say in the Bible that angels have wings? Depending. I mean, at least the ones that they've mentioned. The the seraphim, for example, uh, have six wings, uh, two of which they fly with, two that cover their eyes, and two that cover their feet. Uh, So that's one. And then also uh, Gabriel... And Michael have both been presented as having wings as well. Okay. So but, I, remember, I remember hearing that on another podcast at one point saying that they never mentioned that they had wings, just that they were flying. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember. I thought they mentioned they were, had wings, but yeah. Obviously like they're wrong. Like the burning ones. Is that the seraphim That's, as that's well? a seraphim. Mm-hmm. But... They're also represented as being on fire because they're in the presence of God. Yeah. The seraphim are like 
one of the highest of angels and the, and they're in the presence of God at all times and his light or his energy is so potent that they're known as the burning ones and they actually cover their eyes out of uh, respect and humility uh, you know like they, they can't look God in the in the eyes with their eyes so they cover their face and they can't bear their feet because bearing their feet would be as like making them naked basically they need to cover themselves uh so there's a lot of humility and symbolism represented in the sh in the seraphs um and what they ultimately present uh, or represent and there's been very few limited cases in which the seraphim have left uh they're, they're considered messengers um but it's rare that they actually leave and send messengers to to human beings um they're mostly just there to kind of worship god uh day and night uh, but then you have like you know archangel michael which we all have known as like the warrior angel he's the one who's kind of out to protect to make sure the word of god is is you know is present in the world uh gabriel who's more of a messenger who delivers news as we see in like the new testament when when it uh when he goes to to joseph and uh mary and tells them about bearing which is and then of course there's like angels that are presented in the book of revelation which is a little more different in description um intricate as the bible but yeah there's some creepy descriptions you know angels and god have appeared to humans in human form and it's very that's the way it says it in the old testament too is like he appeared as a man to such and such to present this news um but then over the years you got you know like hallmark you know who, who are creating these little tiny cherubs with hearts in their hands and stuff like that and it's like there's there's no angels that are little cute babies flying around these are very big nasty scary creatures that happen to understand how human we are and if they do present themselves usually do it in a way that we can fathom i guess without peeing our pants and dying on the spot <laughs> out of fear <laughs> yeah we've sure touched on a lot of uh paranormal topics uh the, the paranormal rabbit hole like you uh you guys say yeah yeah it's interesting how one thing can actually lead into another though yeah yeah for sure it's just a certain topic will make someone think of something else for whatever reason, and then that's where you go, and yeah. yeah. You never it's kind of crazy to start with the Mandela effect and end on <laughs> angels. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what? Yeah. <laughs> Nelson Mandela? <laughs> Was an angel. Oh! oh. 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 So he's going to come full circle. Oh, wow. <laughs> See how he... Justin's brilliant and just tied everything together. <laughs> brilliant or crazy, I'm not sure which, but... <laughs> You'd be surprised how often those two interlap each other. They do now. <laughs> uh, look at Hitler. He was a very brilliant man. Oh, he was yeah. Yes, this is true. If you think about it, so was Einstein just on the opposite spectrum. You're the opposite spectrum of Einstein. Uh, uh, Einstein. Oh my lord! I can't even. I can't see. Yeah, you can't even insult me correctly. No, Hitler. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy! But yeah, it, it's it's interesting to see how all of these things intersect. Just like we were just talking about insanity and, and brilliance, but how all of the things that we just talked about a lot have to do with perception of what they are mm -hmm. and what they really are yep exactly well a lot of it comes down to a, an individual's not just perception but i mean i guess perception but like just their belief behind whatever it is too i mean you, you look at something like the evil eye we do you talked about earlier um um sleepy hollow you know one mm -hmm. person says oh that's a mark that you've been, you've been marked by the evil eye and the other says no that's a s symbol of, of protection but to one person it might mean that it's a mark of evil and to another it's a good thing and you know we, we see that a lot in, in the paranormal community where there are various symbols used uh for both bad re purposes and good purposes you know I, I can't tell you how many times we've talked to people over the years who who claim that a pentacle is considered evil 
for whatever reason, right? Yeah. Um, it's devil worship oh. symbols and things like that. And I, I'll tell you, a lot of that comes from the Christian uh, viewers who, I've, I mean, I've dealt with many of them over the years. And a lot of them, unfortunately, have been backstabbers in this particular community. Uh, you know, being someone myself who's a Christian, to like talk to them that ask, like answer questions regarding symbols. And they immediately tell me that I'm evil. I'm not a true Christian because I don't believe what they believe. Uh, and I'm cast out, you know, and like, that's the type of stuff that we deal with in the paranormal, paranormal community. Um, when it comes to religions and faith-based, you know, beliefs. Well, look uh, how you came back to faith though, Eric. And at one time you thought the same thing though, too. Right. But no, yeah. you did research. And right. you saw that the church actually used the pentacle at one time to help convert mm. pagan to Christianity mm -hmm. to help them make it easier for them to realize, hey, it's all the same thing. Just look at it this way. Right. Exactly. And, you know, it's changing perspective. You know, you, you view it one way. Well, what if you look at it this way, you know? And so, you know, the pentacle being, in this case, when, when it was used um, by Christians, you had the top point representing the crown of thorns, the two side points representing the nails in the hands and the two bottom for the yep. feet. And that was something that brought a lot of um, uh, a lot of pagans into the understanding of who Christ was. Uh, and they grew new faith in Jesus and the Christian teaching. Um, now, since then, it's been separated again. And we had Wiccans take back their pentacle. Um, where it pretty much originated, uh, and the Christians moved on with the crucifix, which, mind you, there are still a lot of Christians out there who think the crucifix is an evil thing. We shouldn't be having crucifixes because it's called idol worship. Idol. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy, you know? It's like, it, it, it really is just all perspective. The, the, the inverted crucifix or inverted cross. We often see that in movies as a representation of evil, you know, something that's upside down or the reverse of the regular cross. That's not entirely true because when Peter was crucified, he found himself not worthy enough to be crucified the same way Jesus was. So he asked his crucifiers to crucify him upside down on the cross. And that's the first time the cross was ever inverted. So in reality, the inverted cross could be seen as a high... Um, symbol of humility, but Hollywood has stretched that and has considered it an evil thing because it is the opposite of the inverted cross or the, the right side of cross. I actually had forgotten all that. Hmm. But was the cross inverted or was just Paul inverted? Well, that's that, and that's something we don't fully know. That is something we don't fully know, but we would have to think that the cross is inverted because your hands are outstretched. So if right. his hands are still outstretched, right. his cross would have to be upside down unless his hands right. are just kind of hanging, you know? But yeah, but yeah, being crucified, him being crucified inverted, he was just hanging, not crucified well, in the traditional sense. Yeah. I mean, I, we don't know. We, we don't know the full detail of exactly how he was crucified. Um, right, it doesn't I mean, there's, go into detail in the Bible how exactly right. it is. I want to be right. crucified, not like Christ. Yeah, all we know is you said, do it up, like, crucify me upside down. Right. You know, and how they did that. I mean, it's supposed to be two nails in the hands, a one nail in the feet. Oh, right. And that's it. Right. But, you know, other others have had, when they were crucified, they'd get um, no nails. Sometimes you would just be tied to the to the cross or whatever they were using um and they'd be left like that for days and with the inverted cross maybe it was one nail for the hands and two nails for the feet it's possible it's possible mm. it could be two and by hand uh, that's that's just just for the hell of it now it's i got a picture of paul lit <laughs> doing the split for this <laughs> <feet>. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I also want to throw out there, just because we keep saying hands, but that that's kind of a misconception. Yeah. 
you know, because like you're if you put a big ass nail through the middle of your hand, it's going to just rip through yep. your hand. So in reality, they would put the nail in between the, wrist. the two bones of your wrist yep. uh, right through the center there. And that would hit all kinds of nerves on top of it, as well as giving a solid structure to hold itself on. So and it's crazy for like those of you listening who don't understand like what that's probably like, if you just take your thumb and your middle finger and squeeze that fleshy part between the bones in your wrist as hard as you can, it'll give you an idea of the type of mm-hmm. pain it, that you can feel. And that's nothing, obviously, compared to a nail going, yeah. a big nail going through there. You know, it's like a spike, not just a little tiny doornail or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not nails well, like what we're used to now. Right. What's that, Justin? Sorry. I said, just not not to mention the people that get the tattoos on their wrists, mm. and they say that like the most painful thing, and it's not even going through anything; it's just yeah. piercing the skin. Well, it's been uh, an over an hour, my friends. Do you have anything else that you would like to discuss before we sign off? Anything else paranormal? Well, I mean, in, in terms of amulets, I mean, I, I guess since. Let's wrap it up this way because I feel like we kind of vaguely talked about protection, right? Yeah. We talked about the evil eye, uh, or, or at least in this case, the anti-evil eye being an amulet yeah. of protection against the evil eye and gargoyles being protection. And so maybe it's something to just quickly discuss here of like the types of ways that a person can protect themselves yeah. using amulets, <laughs> gems, or whatever other anything really. It could be light or you know just your own belief. Um, there's there there are obviously like various gemstones and rocks that contain energy um and there are some that absorb energy um some of those stones that project energy can kind of create a healing or protective aura uh whereas those like um like what i wear i wear a a, uh, obsidian black obsidian uh, amulet that is known to absorb negative energy and it's very powerful actually it's one of the most powerful stones you can have or have around you uh, in terms of absorbing negative energy and for production because it is a type of stone that wants to pull the negative energy from within and pull negative energy from around you into it Um, and it's really strange because if you wear for example um, an obsidian amulet around your neck that's cleansed and charged um and you wear it around your neck which is right along the heart the throat the third eye and the crown chakras uh it focuses on clearing those energies and if it's strong enough and clean you know if it's cleansed and charged you'll feel it as soon as you put it on there is a weight that just wants to you know it's almost unbearable in some cases and there have been reports of people who stated that they can't they can't work with obsidian because of how powerful it is um but you also have cleansing things like selenite, you know, or various quartz, which aren't as powerful, but certainly are a, a, a pure stone that you can use to protect yourself by absorbing negative energies as well, while also outputting um, some positive frequencies. Um, you know, in, in daily basis, there's a frequency happening in some form, right? Uh, energy frequencies that are both positive and negative, and they fluctuate every day. So having these types of stones, but you got to do your research. <laughs> I don't think we should talk about all the stones because we could be here another hour oh, and a half. There's so, so many of them. You know, it's like something you want to do research on, but it also goes beyond that. Like it's not just a stone or an amulet. You know, it could be a symbol. We've talked about the crucifix. That is something people use. Um, there are uh, Wiccans who wear the pentacle uh, on a necklace or as like on a little coin, symbol of protection, something that'll protect them as they go about their day uh thoughts are things that's something that justin and i have learned over the years is this idea that thoughts are things and what does that mean well if you truly believe in something that something can be manifested so if you take the time to clear your mind and believe uh or at least manifest in your mind that there's this white energy or this white glowing light surrounding you and protecting you that can manifest itself because that thought has become a reality because of the amount of effort you put into it. Um, It's intention. So there are various different ways that you can go about protecting yourself. And these are just like a couple of the small things you can do. uh, And you can go as deep into the 
rabbit hole as you want, <laughs> you know, when it, when it comes to these things. You know, there are people who I've seen them, you know, we, we go to like metaphysical stores and they're just head to toe in stone. Like they, they look like a walking shrine. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you need that much, but, you know, some people feel like they do. And that's okay. As long as there's a reason behind it. Yeah, those um, these people that wear all those stones, I... <laughs> I, for whatever I was thinking, let's. I hope they don't fall in the lake or something because they're, they're weighed down with all these stones, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, my, my favorite is selenite. I know these guys. These guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's these guys that can get rid of a guy. Just put a bunch of stones on them and put them in the river. <laughs> this, is that the Sicilian coming out of you, uh, Justin? <laughs> I guess a little. <laughs> I'm more New Yorkish than Sicilian, but whatever. Justin, do you have any particular amulets that you uh, you're particularly drawn to, uh, like stones or any symbols? Um, the it's gonna sound very odd, but crystal skulls are always something that draw me. Um trying to think if there's any specific stones that they're creative created out of that draw me um there's one that i've had kind of a dream about or or maybe even a vision not really sure um we'd had a gentleman on about crystal skulls and i had actually kind of messaged him about it because i had this dream and I, I i or vision and i had this idea that it was actually meant for my wife Shelly, not for me. Um, but it's a very dark blue, um, almost electrical looking in nature. It's kind of it's got like flashes of light blue in it. Um, don't know what the stone would be. Don't know if it would be something that's kind of man made. But I, I've always held on to that because I can't find it for the life of me. Um, but never a specific stone. Skulls usually always call to me. And I don't know if that's because it's a, a representation of death and, and rebirth. Um, I don't know if that is... But... And I just had this conversation with Eric. My tarot deck now that I have is nothing but skeletons. Interesting. And I don't know why it, it why that keeps drawing to me. Well, I do like skulls too. And it's funny, out of all the crystals that I have, I don't have any crystal skulls. I've got three. Uh, you guys don't do investigations anymore, right? Uh, believe it or not, I actually did one oh, about five, four months ago, three months ago. Oh, okay. It's been maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, and Eric and I did investigations when he was here um, for my birthday, uh, not in anywhere where people were living or a business or anything, but we did we did an investigation in a ghost town where there's supposed to be a lady in gray. Um, we did an investigation in two separate cemeteries, and then uh, those two were with my wife Shelly, and then we did one in a what used to be a cemetery, but they exhumed a supposedly all the graves but there's speculation that there are still some graves there and now it's just a park um and that one we kind of had some type of activity not really sure what it was uh and i did have kind of activity at the the business that i did but it was more so feelings and I did spirit box sessions, which a lot of people believe you really can't use that as evidence. And I'm kind of one of those because it's really hard to tell what the difference is between spirit voices and what's coming through, through a radio signal. Um, but we have, it's just not been as extensive as we used to. I was just wondering, when you do investigations, do you bring anything for protection, or do you say a prayer or anything like that? Usually it's a prayer. Um, Eric used to do a prayer before every investigation that we did with Night Stalkers Paranormal Society, uh, or 
whatever it was that we called it. Um, I've always envisioned the white light or action asking for protection. Um, at one point we did have the St. Benedict pendants that we would wear yeah. on investigations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there were also, of course, salt circles around the car. Uh, after we'd get out of the car, we'd put a layer of salt down. Um, oh, I never thought of doing that. Just to make sure nothing follows us back. At least an added preventative, you know, <laughs> measure. Uh, but we would also just because make sure that we... kind of came from supernatural originally. Too. Well, <laughs> it... <laughs> well, yes, I mean, it, it did, you know, but also like Justin and I got our start off of loving that show you know it's kind of how it began and then you start to realize oh some of this stuff is actually real yeah Salt is actually used yeah. to like uh, you know dampen the energy they've done spirit. their research for that show yeah uh <laughs> but yeah so nonetheless like you know it, it, we, we we did that often and even with our investigations um this past summer uh when i went up to to north or like i guess it was spring geez that was spring um, of last year. No, it was, it was, was summer. it summer? I thought it was like around May or something. Yeah. Oh. It was from my 40th birthday. Okay. So, yeah, you know, and there, um, there were still like, we were very commanding to, to, to make sure these spirits stayed uh, where they were. They were not allowed to follow us home. They were not to use our energy unless we asked them to, uh, you know, things like that. Just making sure that you, we stayed in control as much as we could uh, within the elements uh, that weren't really our elements. You know, when, when, you, when you're trying to reach out to the spiritual world, there are just some things we don't have control over. But, you know, you, we, we take the preventative call, uh, measures. And I think that's important because there have been too many people that we know who've attracted energies and entities uh, that have followed them home. And then there's a whole new problem that they're dealing with. Yeah, and some Just one of them. Yes, yeah. yes. Do you care to share that with with the listeners? Um, well, I've shared it on our show. Yes, um, but we did we did a investigation in Jeffrey Dahmer's uh, family home where he killed his first victim, Stephen Hicks. Uh, we came back to Eric's house to kind because of, he was driving, so I left my my car there. And I, as I went to go into my car, um, I just felt like it, there was something weird here. And I'm like, you cannot follow me home. You're not allowed to come with me in my car to, to my house. You need to leave right now. And I heard, goodbye, Justin. Oh. And, and that's not even, I audibly heard this. It wasn't, I felt it in my head. I audibly heard somebody say, goodbye, Justin. And after that, didn't feel anything else, went home and, and went to bed because it was, we'd done it pretty much all night. Um, it was very early morning when we got back and I went to bed and that was it. Um, last time I've ever really felt anything that was negative that came home with me. Um, as of late, I'm always feeling things around doesn't mean it's an attachment. I'm just feeling people around all the time. Um, and I've talked about this to Eric and several of our guests. Um, in my in my development right now, I'm always having the ringing in my ears like I have t uh, tendon uh, tinnitus in my ears all the time. I remember you and asking I me uh, if I had that too, not too long ago. And I have people telling me, oh, you know, it's just your spirit guides or your angels trying to talk to you. And I'm like, well, I would really wish they would stop it or at least start talking to me in English because it's really freaking annoying. Um, but I don't get anything negative off. I have had that negative feeling and it's not that same feeling as it was. Where Eric will feel negative really at first Um which is interesting where he'll feel the negative and I, I don't. I don't usually feel negative stuff. Which is why we work really well together. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> That's interesting that you don't pick up all the negative and Eric does. But I don't pick up positive. For what he perceives. So, as, yeah. Yeah. So it's perceived as negative. I normally pick up a negative. I do pick up positive as well, but it's mainly negative. 
Now, here's a question for you, Kat. Mm -hmm. Where do you usually feel it when it's negative? My back. <laughs> Eric he feels it in his chest, so that kind of makes sense. The thorax. Yeah. Solar plexus. It would be that spot, but on my back. I get a, a tingling. I I call it my spidey senses. <laughs> we'll be on an investigation. I'm like, I, what's that? I call the I call the stuff that I get in my in my third eye and crown chakra chakra my spidey. It's amazing how people will pick up the same type of energy but different parts of their body, and it makes me wonder why. What's even more interesting is the both of you pick up negative energy in the exact same area. Yeah. I, But with that respect, though, when I've ever felt like it's something negative, it's that heaviness in the chest. And, and we've all felt it on a, on a paranormal investigation. It's very heavy, heavy in the air. You feel it like it's hard to breathe. Um, so is it negative entity or is it negative perception of mm -hmm. what's there we did an investigation once um approaching the building i've never felt this before or since it felt like i was walking through jello that's what the the energy felt like i was walking through jello i had a really difficult time and i really had to stand back and concentrate and just kind of like okay why is this it was the weirdest thing. Like I needed to approach the building to go inside so we can conduct the investigation. Uh, finally, that feeling went away, but it took a lot of concentration on my part. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, any final thoughts, my friends? Stay protected. Yes. <laughs> Stay protected, my friends. <laughs> and could you tell the listener... Don't fall for the Mandela effect. Say that again, Sorry. <laughs> don't fall don't fall for the mandela effect yeah. oh yeah that uh that's an ex very very interesting topic that it, it really is it's just it's it's yeah well would you like to tell the listeners where they can find you go ahead eric give it all right yeah uh, well, you, you can find our show, of course, at paratruthradio.com. Uh, you can also find us on all no, social. No, 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 no. Paratruth.com. Yeah, it's paratruth.com now. <laughs> we changed it recently. Oh. Like, a few months, a couple months ago. We went from radio. Ago. Has it been a year? No, it wasn't a year. Oh, pretty <laughs> pretty much. just this past. Yeah. No, 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 no. Mandela. It's been <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mandela. <laughs> Why does time go so fast? <laughs> So uh, it's every year. So it's paratruth.com. Paratruth. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you can find us at paratruth.com. That's our personal website. You can find all our information, all of our shows, and of course, all the stories about all of our guests that have ever been on. Uh, they have special pages for themselves. Uh, you can also find us uh, on killerpodcast.com, which is part of Evergreen Podcasts. That's the network that we work with. Um, and of course, just find us on any social media Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. You know, any pod, anywhere you can find podcasts, we're there. Excellent. So far. So far. So far. We'll see who starts giving us the boot. <laughs> Are you expecting <laughs> this? Oh, where are we <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so very much, guys. Yeah, well, thanks for having us on. I really it appreciate fun, this. As always. Yeah, we always have a good conversation but we, we bounce all over the place it's just it's just funny <laughs> so i apologize to the listeners if you couldn't keep track <laughs> they can rewind it's all right <laughs> <laughs> please be kind rewind that's showing my age again <laughs> thanks again you guys take care and stay protected yes you do Absolutely. Well, we've made it to the end of another episode. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, take care of each other. And if you'd like to be on the show or have questions and comments, just drop me an email, paranormalheart13 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you.
paranormal heart would like to extend a special thank you to purpleplanet.com for supplying the music for the show. The views and opinions expressed on Paranormal Heart are those of the host and participants 